Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to GP Prague. It's Riley and Zimon in the booth here. Zimon Gertz and the Pro Tour champion. And on your screen, so excited, Zimon, to bring this match to the people watching around the world. Alexander Hain, the Pro Tour champion, has joined us in the feature match area, along with Gianluca Gazzola on Shardless Bug. We've seen both of these decks a lot this weekend, Zimon, and you've got to be so excited to see how this works out. Yes, and uh, one reason for that is that I just love to see Alexander Hain play. Uh, he's such a precise player. He, has, he always has a plan, which might not be the most obvious, but... Um, he he really um, g gets there with his with his uh, decks, and um, ever ever since he won the Pro Tour with with a really surprising miracle deck, at least surprising for for the Pro Tour competitors at that time. Yeah, absolutely, cementing him in a, in a very rare and r rarefied club. I know uh, Zimon Gertz and uh, you know a couple of the members here. As as we get underway with our uh, our first uh, quarter final here, Alexander Hain opening up with a Delva of Secrets. He's Gri Grixis Delva list. A Gazzola, on the other hand, uh, opening up with a Ponder. Looks like we've got the big shuffle going on here as well. So Hain as well. Really impressive performance from him so far uh, this weekend. Uh, obviously, the Grixis Delva list, uh, more or less the top of the pile of the of the Delva, the different Delva strategies that we see. Yes, uh, it, it has uh, basically pushed... Uh, other three color combinations uh, out of the out of the meta game uh, almost there is some some people are trying uh, shirtless delver variants excuse me and um, you also see the blue red burn based uh, delver but um, no no more um, yeah n not not much more of, of other uh, archetypes but as we see, there's also people trying out Timur Delver and with success. Timur Delver obviously getting Gianluca Gazzola into the, uh, into the top eight, so he'll be happy with that. But Alexander Hain here, this, re this reminds me of the old days of standard with Delver where you'd blind flip the Mana League, get on the board, get in for three, because Alexander Hain has gone Delver, flip days, young Pyromancer. What a great start for the Canadian. Yes, and even knowing about the days doesn't necessarily make it, make it easier for Gazzola because knowing that your opponent has a daze makes this play so much more awkward. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, Gazzola may be kind of priced in to uh, to try to counter that young Pyromancer, but Hayne more than happy to, uh, to counter back by himself. And here's Force pitching uh, Brainstorm. I'm not done yet, says Gazzola. No, he's still got some fighting to do. And it looks like he's going to win this particular counter battle, although that has taken a huge amount of resources out of his hand. You can see the rather absurd positioning of Gazzola with his uh, graveyard. He's playing it like a dredge player across the top of his uh, battlefield. Uh, for now, things are um, not too difficult to assess. I think um, the reason for that might actually be that he's playing quite a lot of Delve cards. Mm. Um, not only Delve of Secrets, but also Hooting Mandrels. That's right, yeah. And I mean, this is the this is the latest technology we've seen from many of these Delver lists. They're playing Delve cards. We're seeing, uh, you know, decent but pretty unexciting commons that went round and round the draft tables, uh, making their way into one of the most powerful formats in the in in the game. This is actually the the mirror then, right? The Gurmak Angler against the Gurmak Angler Mandrels. against the Hooting Mandrels. Hoot hoot, they say. But the the Zombie Fish, of course, has a five five reign supreme. Ponder here from Alexander Hain. Team, uh, the teamer player l is looking to to just stabilize here, being on the draw, yes, but, uh, due to Alexander Hain being fourth and uh, Gazzola uh, being fifth after Swiss. So Alexander Hain got to choose to play first, which dis did give him the uh, initiative, and uh, Gianluca is now uh, trying to catch up with the, the day setting both players back a turn. So both players here attempting to, yeah, as you mentioned, get back into it uh, in a meaningful way after some early pressure from the Canadian. Yeah, but the main reason uh, Gianluca is down life is <laughs> because he had to cast that dismember. Yeah, that's uh, true. Forrest also took one point away. Uh, and, of course, the blind flip on, on Delvor Secrets. But Gianluca can't be, can't be too unhappy having a stable board. Uh, Having the the blue card draw spells, mm. ponder, brainstorm, to get things going. But now, I I would be afraid of of Gurmak Angler. This is a card that you do ha do need a plan for. Yeah, because so many of these uh, so many of these lists uh, that are that in are playing in Delver don't have a lot of these hard answers. I mean, we saw a dismember beforehand, but apart from that, you know, there aren't Doomblades running around in this format. 
No, actually, um, it's almost no deck can afford to play two mana for a removal spell. That's not Abrupt Decay. Yeah. So And Abrupt Decay, of course, as we've seen many times this weekend, at a bit of a loss against these four and higher cost casting uh, spells. Yeah, which, which is th w another reason why they are uh, popular. So it's back to Hain now, the Canadian, having a look at the top three with Ponder. Most aptly named card in Magic, I would say. And Hain happy with what he sees, so he draws. Also uh, making this play with a fetch land in play. So uh, with with a Ponder like this, it's not quite the same as shuffling away unwanted cards with uh, Brainstorm, because then you get to choose from your whole hand. But with a Ponder, you if you like exactly one card, yeah. You would usually not keep the pile, uh, or you might not want to keep the pile if, if it's two dead draws. But with the fetch land, you can pick the best card, and you get a, a fresh a fresh library. And this is something for people who might not be very intimately familiar with Legacy. This is something that is a hallmark of the format: brainstorm, fetch land, ponder, shuffling your library, and uh, it, it really result like the card qu overall card quality is so much dependent on exactly what kind of thing you can sculpt into your hand. I mean, you can you can write books about it, and sh there and there have been a lot of articles written about it, especially when it comes to brainstorm. Mm. It's um, it's just uh, a matter of maximizing the utility of the cards that you have access to, and it's it's somewhat more important to to maximize that utility as compared to maximizing just this the sheer amount of cards that you have. Gurmeg angle of the play for Alexander Hain, exiling six cards from his graveyard. Now, this does two things. Obviously, puts him on the board in a major way. The other thing it does, Hain not playing green, Gazola is. That means the Tarmogoyf is going to come down sooner or later, and there is one in Gazola's hand. That shrinks the Tarmogoyf quite, uh, quite significantly. Yes, and we, we've seen this before, uh, how Delph and uh, Tarmogoyf, this, this anti-synergy, can mm. be um, detrimental. For the for the players relying on on Tarmogoyf, because I know Gazola is relying on the Hooting Mandrels to get across the line in many instances, and uh, yeah, they don't line up too well together. The four four Trample and the biggest baddest Thumper Tarmogoyf uh, often at odds with each other, mate. Yes, but if you play two Hooting Mandrels, you you can usually, if you don't want the Goyf to shrink, you can find a way yeah. to do it. But of course, uh, Alexander Hain is more than happy to remove his whole graveyard. Yeah, he's not going to be relying on those cards at all. They've just acted as six Lotus Petals for this 5-5, five five, and it's now Gazola on the back foot trying to find an answer, and uh, he's not long on them, Zimon. It's difficult. It's a 5-5, five five and uh, we'll see the Tarmogoyf you mentioned. Tarmogoyf looks like a 3-4 three, three, a three four at the moment. Instant sorceries. And a land. I, I don't think it's a land, it's a dismember. Ah, so dismember hiding out there as two well, three so just only. a 2-3. So yes, Alexander Haynes certainly getting rid of those lands in his graveyard. He'll be happy about that. And the creatures as well. There is a Scalding Torn in play for Gianluca. Okay. So um, it's, it is a 2-3, but a virtual 3-4. Virtual three uh, three Here comes Gataxian Probe. Let's see what you're working with. Well, read them and weep, says Gazola. Look at that. Fire and Ice. I, uh, don't, I don't think you say that. With that I don't think you say it. You know, well, he's talking to himself. You read them, I'll weep. Brainstorm and a uh, Misty Rainforest here. Alexander Hain, having availed himself of that information, draws a card. It looks like he's got a pretty nice attack here. Do you see how sometimes the, the very late um, Gitaxian Probe can be even better mm. than, uh, than a turn one oh, of Gitaxian course. Probe? Because Fewer cards to remember. Fewer cards to write down, mate. It's always better. The value. No, I, I meant, of course, the fact that sometimes the information is much more relevant. Yeah. No, for sure. In this situation, Alexander Hain knows now exactly how to proceed. Playing against... Uh, you know, uh, a seven-card hand at the beginning of the game. There's a number of draw steps to happen. There's a number of developmental uh, stages to take place. But right here, he knows what he's up against. Although that brainstorm might have something to say about of that. Of course, of course. But for example, uh, things like this, you you know that this dismember should target the Tarmogoyf because mm. there's not another creature to 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 be seen for now. So yes, indeed, dismember being hard cast here by the look of things, or uh, maybe paying some life. Uh, it appears so, yes. Not wanting to, to lose too much life. And went a wasteland as well. Okay, so that tropical island is gone. Gazola yes. with another fetch land in hand. That's very tough because the wasteland on Gianluca's side is not going to help him against Gurmak Angler. It's, uh, it's one of these examples of both decks wanting to use wasteland when they are ahead. Yeah. But it's not a card that helps you catch up. 
No, not at all. I mean, obviously, random utility against uh, creature lands out of Sultai or things like Caracas or Richard and Port out of uh, out of uh, Death and Taxes. But no, very much a, a card that you definitely want to leverage to maintain or, or solidify an advantageous position. Interestingly, uh, sorry, mate. Yeah, Gian Gianluca actually feels uh, pressured here to uh, already fetch, maybe even casting Brainstorm end of turn. Yeah. Uh, potentially just find another land to ice the Gurmak Angler for a turn. Yeah. I could see that as a as a potential line, wastelanding Volcanic Island of Hain, uh, icing the Gurmak Angler, hoping to draw into something that deals with it permanently. Although that's difficult in in his deck, but. Uh, um, you, you you have to hope for something like a twin aim nemesis. Yeah, a sufficiently large Tarmogoyf would get there as well, and the Tarmogoyf now would be a five six, because the graveyards have have refueled. Yeah, yeah, in a very big way. We've seen both creature and land enter with sorcery instant uh, in there as well. And then maybe just hope, maybe just hope that the uh, Alexander Hain will not be able to cast his red spells. Oh, but here's a daze. Look at that. That's crippling for Gazola there. Missing out on that brainstorm. He's far from out of it because ice is still an option. Force of will to draw. So Tamagoyf would be a 4-5 here. But Creature, land, instant sorcery? Yeah. And it's back to Hain now. And we're going to see, yes, the play that you mentioned, Zimon, uh, tapping the uh, angler in the upkeep and finding a blue card... Is it a spell snare? It is, yes. Um, Gianluca had to decide whether to whether to sacrifice his wasteland or to keep it for mana, and he's also not sacrificing uh, Misty Rainforest, maybe in the hopes of being able to survive another hit of the angler. I'm not sure if that's actually realistic. Go down to one and and uh, not be able to use your mana ever again. Lightning bolt the draw for Gazola here. Writing's on the wall, I would think, for the Timo Delva player. He's down to one. That means no fetching for him, and and that basically means that there is n uh, there aren't many outs for him. And he's going to pack him up. So there we go. Alexander Hayne, the Canadian Pro Tour champion, very happy to take game number one. You can see him wrapped with exultation, absolutely uh, beside himself with joy after having won that one. Gianluca Gazzola having a look into that deep dark truthful mirror. He's going to find if uh, he's going to find out if he can dig deep enough to equalise things in game number two. Is Alexander Hain looks what uh, looks at what his options are. We do we are fortunate enough to have the deck lists in front of us. So, uh, Zimon, uh, why don't you run us through what's going on on the uh, Teamer side of the Delver uh, Axis? The Teamer sideboard has two Fluster Storm, two Submerge, two Rough Tumble, and two Price of Progress. And then there is a few one-offs. Okay, I guess Red Elemental Blast and Pyroblast we can count as a two-off. One Surgical Extraction, one Graph Digger's Cage, one Corrosing Grip, one Ancient Grudge, and one Sulfur Elemental. A lot of cards that don't necessarily target uh, things in the Grixis Delver deck. No, not a lot of options there, really. I mean, I like the inclusion of the Blasts. Yes, th I think that's a given. You can think about Submerge. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, you need you need your opponent to have Forest, and I'm not sure if, if, uh, if you can... If you can guarantee that you you're not uh, you're not certain that your opponent will have the tropical island in play, so that what that seems. Sorry, mate. What are your thoughts here on the rough and tumble? Because of course, Gazola is not playing with any copies of uh, Young Pyromancer, whereas uh, Alexander Hain is. So that's an option there to clean that up. That's a, that's a good uh, a good idea. Yes, I I kind of like that. We'll come back to the Grixis Delva sideboard in just a minute, but right now it's Lucas Blohan facing off against Rodrigo Tagores. Rodrigo on Storm. Looks like he's in the middle of going off with this, pa with this Past in Flames on the battlefield. Blohon playing uh, probably the, what is the fairest deck in the format against maybe the unfairest. And this looks super interesting. It looks like uh, Past in Flames is on the stack. Yeah. With the Death Rite Shaman activation, the only thing that uh, Lucas Blohon has available to him. Or the, the only relevant thing at, at this stage. Liliana on six. Huge Tarmogoyfs. So, it seems like we're going to have Dark Ritual exiled by the, uh, by the Death Rite Shaman. But then it looks like, yeah, Past in Flames is good to go. So, we'll see if Tagores can turn this into a W. I'm guessing that three on the die is the Storm count. Lion's Eye Diamond, Storm up to four. Now the mana. Three mana in pool. And it's going to it's going to be preordained. 
But how is I think I think Rodrigo is just uh, this looks like a desperation attempt because uh, he he's facing so much pressure from from Blohan that he just had to go for it. Gataxian probe, the next one for Tagoras here. He draws a card, finds another Gataxian probe. Storm count six. Lion's Eye Diamond in hand as well. Here's another Gataxian probe, down to four now. So as you say, bit of a desperation attempt here. Brainstorm. He's going to use up that uh, next piece of blue mana here. Down to one. Four life, one blue mana, misty rainforest, and Blowhorn seems to have F6 here. I don't think there's, I don't think there's any cards in his hand. No, this is, uh, this seems to be, seems to be the situation. Tagoras hasn't picked up his entire deck while he's shuffling there, leaving something on the. Uh, he's going to give that enough, uh, another reshuffle there. Missed out a card on the bottom. As he passes it back to Blowhorn. Now the storm count goes up with a brainstorm again here. So no matter in pull for, T for Tagoras here. Multiple lion's eye diamonds, which could have played earlier, but now he might just be out of it. He might just be out of card draw and hasn't found uh, anything to, to achieve victory. Now I can't see a lot of action in the graveyard. A little bit difficult to see with that glare. I think Tagoras is playing with a lot of foils here. But, but also the... He would have needed the mana from of Lion's Eye Diamond, I think. Ah, no, he he's waiting with the Lion's Eye Diamonds to to flash back past him flames actually. Ah, it, to uh, give all it was apparently not flash back, but uh, hard cast. Yeah. So mm, let's see, if he gets no, right now it's only the the Gitaxian power because clearly the the other spells he's flashbacked are um, okay. Can't get there, Tagores. Unfortunately, the Storm deck, as it can do sometimes under huge pressure. It does fizzle. I mean, Storm, an enormously powerful deck in the right circumstances, can win on turn one, can win on turn two with surprising regularity, but uh, subject to disruption, and uh, unfortunately for Tagores there, it's going to be a win, another win to Shardless Solto. Back to our original match now. But but also the um, yeah the fact that you just empty your graveyard, and then if you don't find the win condition, uh, there's not much you can do. You Even if uh, if it wasn't lethal, he uh, he just didn't have anything left. So here we are now with Hain and Gazola. Both of these guys will have updated their decks. Looks like Hain might be uh, mulliganing here. So let's have a look at what he may have sideboarded. Two Winter Orb, two Painful Truth, two Baleful Strix, two Surgical Extraction, two Fluster Storm, one Pyroblast, one Dark Blast, one Ancient Grudge, one Pithy Needle, one Cabal Therapy. Rather neat little package there. And what are you looking at here? I think I like Baleful Strix okay. in, any, in any kind of creature matchup. Uh, sure, against Hooting Mandals you take some uh, trample damage, but it blocks Delver of Secrets, also in, in uh, insect elaboration form. Yeah. Um, Obviously a nice clean answer to Tarmogoyf as well. Exactly. So uh, most creatures you, you are able to deal with. It doesn't, well, you, you have no answer to True Name Nemesis, but that's, uh, I think, something that you can easily raise in this matchup. One card I'll be curious to see if it comes in is Winter Orb. I think Winter Orb, uh, especially in these tempo matchups where, you know, there's, there's such a mana denial, mana restriction going on uh, anyway, Winter Orb could be uh, a key piece of the puzzle here for him. I, I don't expect Winter Orb, uh, to be honest. I think uh, you, you can play a mana denial plan, but that has to revolve around uh, Wasteland and killing uh, Death Red Shaman. Okay. Um... I think the Timur Double Deck doesn't have Death Red Shaman, is this correct? So actually you, you could have a huge advantage if you are um, if you start off with a with a Death Red Shaman that the opponent can't answer. Alright, well we'll see how things go. Gazola also uh, uh, with the option of course of buffering his his deck as uh, Alexander Hain sends a card below decks after a scry. Gazola gonna kick things off with a Delver of Secrets. So here we go with game number two. Grixis and Timo Delva. Let's see if Hain has a response. Do you force a turn one Delva yes, on the draw? Absolutely. After Mulligany? Absolutely. Yes, you um, do. It's, it's not so much about having Mulligan or not wanting to spend two cards. A turn one Delva is so much so much uh, better than uh, a turn turn five Delva. It's it's just worth multiple cards easily. Here's Gataxian Probe revealing the uh, red elemental blast that you mentioned before, Zimon. That's up in the mix. Two Ponders and a Tarmogoyf here. 
That's a great hand. That's an amazing yeah. hand. Yeah, I think we, we talk about the, the tempo game plan of these Delver decks, and, and right now what Gazzola is looking at is playing a 3-4 on turn two and then defending it with, uh, with Red Elemental Blast. And also other ways to, uh, you know, there's going to be ponders. Yeah, at the same Find time, just, just finding, finding whatever he needs. But Hain is going to disrupt, do some disruption of his own, wasting the Tropical Island here. And we, we've seen him uh, employ this plan multiple times. Just going for um, an, a strategy which reduces which reduces his opponent's options, and then uh, he wants to be the one with the with the Gurmak Angler in play that he can cast easily. Yeah. Because um, all of his wastelands. And uh, because and everything has traded, right? So yeah. uh, you trade everything, and then it's it's all about the the cheapest, biggest creature, which uh, the Grixis Delver deck has. Here's a ponder now for Gazzola. A, a, a daze was the draw for him. That's an interesting way of looking at it, Zim, and something I certainly hadn't considered in the past. When you cast a, uh, when you cast a Gurmag Angler and you exile six cards from your graveyard, the expectation is every single one of those cards has traded for another card. And look at Alexander Hayden's graveyard right now. All of them have. Wasteland for a land, a Force of Will for a Delver, and Gataxian Probe replaced itself. What a, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. You're exhaling six cards that already... It's like a seven for one, basically. <laughs> well, not, not quite, because uh, you... Um, I mean, the, the other cards... But you did something very relevant with them. Yeah. So, so Delving rewards you for, for being for, active. For playing the game, yes. yeah. I mean, it's, you, it's the sort of like the Monastery Mentor uh, uh, in, in any, any spell-based deck. It's rewarding you for playing a game you're going to anyway. And look how, how this game is uh, turning out. This is... Uh, Legacy at its finest. Yeah, absolutely. No permanence for either people for and uh, and nice full hands. Both pass both both passing of the turn. Gazola finds another land, however. Rough tumble, the um, split card. Yeah, it's a rough and tumble is the uh, is a it's a pyroclasm that doesn't hit flyers, so which is great if you're playing Delver. Delver of Secrets, Vendillion Click, of course, both immune to the rough and tumble. Not so great when you're playing against Delver. No, certainly not. Although against Young Pyromancer, it cleans up pretty nicely, and I'm not surprised to see Gazola bring it in. And you can even hit sometimes, luckily hit um, a turn one Delver that doesn't flip yeah. plus a Pyromancer. Gataxian Probe now for Hain. And Gazola calming down a little bit, not cracking that fetch land straight away. We're going to see it happen now, though, in response to this, uh, this probe. And it's Red Elemental Blast. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's a little bit greedy. But uh, Gianluca is assuming that Hain has no lands and uh, sees this more as a time walk. Okay. Well, we'll see if he's been proven right here as the Canadian considers what he's going to uh, do for the rest of his turn. It's very possible that Hain drew the, the probe, but if he draws the land next turn, it's not, it's not uh, that big of a there cost. There you go. So Alexander Hain passing the turn without a land. And here's another Delver of Secrets. Hain with nothing to say about it draws a card he doesn't find another land here so Gazzola now is off to the races can he flip the uh, Delver? He cannot but a Ponder in hand might have something to say about that, Hooting Mandrel's the drawer as well so here's a Ponder no green swords at the moment for Whoa. so another rough and tumble lands are really ball. rare uh, yeah. in this game yeah yeah this rem reminds me of the of the teamer Delver mirrors where, where you would only have like uh, six mana producing lands, not counting wastelands, yeah. like six mana producing fetchable lands. And sometimes you would even see surgical extraction being boarded in to uh, play a mana denial plan. So you would um, wasteland a volcanic and just surgical it and take away all the red, sor uh, all the red sources from your opponent. Jeez. Yeah, th this was some, some crazy magic. I think... Um, who was? I think Jason Wilson did that at a, at a GP I watched, and it was very impressive. Well, as I'm looking at these lists here, I mean, there are only between six and... Uh, I mean, yeah, see, it's six. It's uh, three volcanic, three tropical for Gazzola, and uh, three volcanic, one tropical, one underground sea for Alexander Hain. Yeah. Almost, almost, the, almost the same setup. Yeah, wow. Maybe it might be time. Might be time to dust off those surgical extraction. I mean, many people are playing them anyway. Alexander Hain's playing too. I'm sure Alexander Hain has talked to uh, Wilson about um, legacy. Yeah. Yeah, the two of them known for their very colourful uh, approach to the format. Unfortunately, we're not seeing Tybalt or Hidogetsu's second right in this list. Obviously, the, probably the last minute cuts for Alexander Hain there. 
So now Hooting Randall's is coming down and Heinz still at zero lands. If he has a force here, we could um, could certainly see it. I, I think he almost needs it because even though he has the Gremek Anglers, uh, if he isn't holding one right now, yeah, it's going to be really difficult. Hoot hoot. The 4-4 trample coming down and Alexander Hain really in a, in a tough spot here as Gazzola has been the one to draw out of that, that sort of board stall. <laughs> we call it a board stall, the empty board. Better than his opponent here. And true name nemesis as well here for Gazzola. But gets in for five. Alexander Hain down to nine. Here's Tarmogoyf. And things are really piling up here. I don't know how the Canadian gets out of this. No, no not with not with zero permanence. Uh, he he found the force finally. Um, eight. If he has a fetch land and a Gromek angler, he's on seven, and then he needs the Delver to not flip. Okay, I mean days is just uh, so so absurd if you're if you're playing against an opponent with zero permanence. Yeah. And we see now Hayne. final draw step for him. You would think. 4-5 Tarmogoyf, 4-4 four, four Hooting Mandrels, and a 1-1 one, one Delver. <laughs> There's other decks in the format which can easily win now, like Goblin Charbelcher or Storm. But Yeah. But here with a full grip and no lands, I don't see how Hain gets out of this one. Going to need something very special here. Polluter Delta. Oh, at long last. And he thought about this turn and decided to continue playing, which, which can really only mean Gurmak Angler or, or a removal spell, maybe. Yeah, but I mean, what is there? Dark Blast brought in out of the board isn't going to get you very far. That's true. Even, even the removal spells don't really deal with the, with the huge creatures. Yeah, it's got to be a... Uh, oh, no, it's a Deathrite Shaman. Okay, very brave. So Hayne is going to go down to two here, or maybe just be dead to a Delver flip, and there it is. I, I think now he's just fishing for information, if, okay. if you ask me. Yeah, certainly legitimate to do that. See if there's anything extra, but no, as it is, Hayne goes down. One and one between these two here, and you can see the pained look as Alexander goes back to his sideboard, but Gianluca Gazzola will be very happy with that performance. Uh, it's amazing to me what, what kind of expressions you, you find uh, in these people after their games. Oh, they have very expressive faces, Simon. They, they look uh, basically the same to me. No, no, no. You've, it's all, you've, got to you've got to read between the lines. Not, not very good at reading people. No, no of course uh, not. That's not my specialty. Not, not your job, mate. That's, that's why we have you. That's it. That's the only reason. Let's have a look at these sideboards once again. I mean, we saw how these sideboard cards uh, came into play, well, into the hands at least. We saw a rough and tumble here and there. Uh, what other things do you think are going to be on the players' minds? I, I think the... The important part in game three is to not run your force of will into a red elemental blast or a pyroblast. Yeah. Because that's that's kind of the blowout that that will swing the, swing the game around. Let's check in on our other match here: Lucas Blohan and Rodrigo Togores. We saw Togores sort of fizzle a little bit last time uh, while playing Storm. Blohan, on the other hand, playing a very fair game of Magic after suspending an ancestral visions. Looks like that. Uh, Shardless Agent may have hit uh, him to Turak, perhaps? Yes, there's there's one in the graveyard. Uh, not the art that we usually see. No. That's the, like, black ghosty things hanging out. Infernal Tutor. Cast to find another Lotus Petal here. I love this about Infernal Tutor, that sometimes you, you don't play it when you're Hellbent. Yeah. Yeah, it can be very helpful in, uh, in finding the cards that you need every now and again. If you've already got a decent hand, you just need that one more piece. Sometimes you can fetch it out. Yeah, or, or, if, or if you draw multiple tutors. Th there's, there's a bunch of things that, that are going on. So the agent comes in. And it's going to be Tarmogoyf as well. So Blohon putting uh, Togoras on the clock. Yes, but not, not too much disruption here or either. With the uh, Deathrite Shaman... Um, you kind of have to think about which cards you want to you want to exile should a pass in flames hit. Lotus oh Petal, wow. Lotus Petal, and here's Ad Nauseam. So Tagore is uh, looking like he might want to go off here. 
But it's it's interesting. He's um, like like in game one uh, where we got a glimpse. He is opting to delay his um, his line side diamonds. Yeah. So he's waiting with that um, to to get more information about if he's going off this turn, uh, if he wants to discard his hand, maybe even to make uh, passing flames more potent and so on. So ad nauseum, an absurdly powerful draw engine, essentially a five mana instant that lets you uh, basically do a dark confident trigger as many times as you like. You can uh, you can reveal cards from the top of your library and put them in your hand and they do damage to you equal to their converted mana cost so at the moment it's one two three four damage still at four still at four five six or six sorry sorry seven and here's a duress for eight so tagore is down to now is the critical point because uh, because tagore is at five uh any other cards might be dark petition and the curve tops stops out at five there in most storm decks, and it looks like Tagoras is playing it safe, not interested in maybe killing himself with a dark petition there. So, five cards, or sorry, five life for Tagoras, a million billion cards. We're going to kick things off with a Gataxian Pro by the look of things. Storm count currently three. Oh, that's also another reason to keep. Um keep life uh -huh. uh, to be able to to cast cards like this for their Phyrexian mana cost. The the Sensei's Divine Shops, the multiple Sensei's Divine Shops are interesting to me. He has one in the main deck which is which is uh, cl a classic for Storm, but he also has another one in the sideboard and that has to be uh, to have a, a good way to deal with, um, well not to deal with, but to circumvent discard spells, him to Torex and so on, like float, float cards on, on the top of your deck. So, Tagore is in the process of attempting to go off, and you can see Blohon there giving him a hand in keeping track of anything, everything. But let's flip back to our original match here, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Alexander Hain facing off against uh, his opponent, uh, uh, um, Gazola here. And just in time also to, to see the hand of Gianluca, not quite, we were a little bit too slow. Um, rough tumble, I, I caught, but um, not the more relevant cards, unfortunately. Ponder here. So Alexander Hain looks like he's going to take the shuffle. Let's see what he can find. The mana denial plan not working out from last time. Uh, Zimon, during the Swiss, we saw him absolutely uh, crucify an opponent. Uh, in the exact same position, more or less, as we saw last game. But uh, at the end of the day, it was Gazzola who drew out of it better. No, yeah, but it could have could have gone the other way. Um, I would I would say just based on the fact that both players were were drawing and saying go, um, it was more or less 50-50 uh -huh. uh, who who would find their their land first, and clearly that player would have would have be um, would be in a in a great advantage. Volcanic Island, the play for uh, Gianluca Gazzola here. We'll see how things pan out in this, very much in this developmental stage of the game. Both players perhaps looking to stick an early threat. But at, at the moment, we're not seeing anything like that just yet. It looks like it might be Ponder for Gazzola, and yes, indeed it is. Yes, which is, which is clearly a good card, but um, still, on the other side of the table, you're relieved to see uh, something that doesn't impact the board uh, yeah. in, the, in the very early stages. Yeah, turn one Delver often can be a bit of a nightmare for uh, opposing players, but... Uh, Haynes dodged that particular ball at this time. On his side of things, he is the Delver on turn two. Yes, and this this could represent many things. Also, with the with the polluted Delta up and immediately being fetched, um, he could have he could have counter magic up now. If you have a hand that is very reactive, but and has only one threat, uh, like the Delver, sometimes you um, actively delay it for a turn or two. Okay to be able to protect it. All right. That makes good sense here because, yeah, Hayne is going to look to uh, ride this Delver to victory and uh, we're going to see maybe a Ponder to, de to set up the flip here. That's what we, uh, we're going to see here. And there's a very, very good chance that Alexander Haynes Delver, should it live, will flip next turn after this Ponder. Yes, and that also means that the rough part of rough tumble is not going to be great. Mm. 
Gianluca clearly can't can't daze the ponder here. He would he would set himself uh, back too much, tempo wise. And uh, Hain, I think, very um, clearly playing around wasteland. He's getting to it identical lands, rather than exposing his um, a, another uh, like a red source um, to a to a wasteland. So Gazzola goes searching and finds Tropical Island on top of his library. Shuffles up after that misty rainforest. Fire and ice in, in, in his hand as well. That's a nice answer to the, to the, to the, to the Delver. Yes. Um, but it's going to be rough and tumble here. No? Fire and ice. Okay. One and one. Does Hain have a response? He does not. So away goes the Delver with a little bit of uh, extra damage there, a little forked bolt. If you are concerned about Young Pyromancer, makes sense to keep the, the rough. And the Wrath will also deal deal with another Delve, but you are you are uh, forced to cast it immediately, which is which is a small price to pay. Here's another Delva. Looks like Alexander Hain might have drawn a Daze. Certainly, if he had a Daze, you would have deployed it last turn. Yes, and we we knew that he would put an instant uh, on top of his library. So that makes good sense there. Doesn't have a third land though, or didn't play one. Both is possible. Uh, Delvedex uh, traditionally uh, definitely able to operate on two lands only, but you generally want them to be um, to be uh, covering all three of your colors. Brainstorm in response to this wasteland activation. Hayne's going to draw three cards, see what he can find, and hopefully set up a Delva flip for him next turn. Although uh, I could see as well the uh, the Delva eating it. If Gazzola's got some kind of counter spell to protect his rough and tumble here, he has double days. If you're sitting on two dazes, I it might actually be more important to develop your own mana if you have the chance. If you just have a normal land drop, rather than uh, rather than waste landing. It's it's once again one of these situations where your opponent has missed a land drop. So naturally, you assume I should um, I should wasteland, but is it really the the right play to to wasteland one of the lands that that the opponent has a copy of, or is it better to wait um, until they search out the red source and then take care of that one? Now this Gurmag Angler would be would be looking pretty good. Alexander Hain has played around us a single days with uh, le by leaving the polluted delta up, but uh, I don't think he can beat the double days here. Oh, let, let's see what happens. He can pay for the first. He has a still three cards in hand. Okay. Maybe four. And uh, Gianluca is paying... Oh, no, he does a have a days of his own in hand. See? And, there you and go. Uh, Gianluca is playing a, paying a, a huge price if he really goes for double days there. Um, two cards, two land drops. Uh, when you only have two lands in play, I think that's, uh, that's hefty. On, on the other hand, how how do you beat the how do you beat the the fish? The yeah, zombie the, fish. the zombie fish is very mighty indeed. I think that there's a, a dismember hanging out somewhere, but uh, not a lot of answers in the Cazola 75 against the zombie fish. Away goes the polluted delta here for Alexander Hain. See what he finds here. It's going to be a volcanic here. And this is, I think, one of the reasons we saw the double, uh, the double underground sea being fetched there, because he knew that he really wanted to resolve this, or at least be able to cast his uh, Gurmak Angler here. Yes, and it, like I said, it, it did play around uh, Wasteland, give, um, putting the opponent in a, in a tough spot. D do you Wasteland or do you wait? And g giving your, your opponent these chances to, to make uh, small mistakes or, or give you tiny edges is, is exactly what, uh, what Hain is uh, demonstrating here. Baleful Strix, the follow-up play now after the Angler gets in for five. And we're going to see Red Elemental Blast in response. It's going to counter the uh, Baleful Strix, of course a blue card. We could also easily see um, Hain just always have that one fetch line open. And uh, that way almost uh, negating the power of, of Days completely. Force of Will, the draw for Gazzola. <coughs> Excuse me. 
as the insectile aberration takes to the skies. A 3-2 flyer. And um, then shuffling away Force of Will because the biggest threat is already on the table. A little bit of a scry type effect there with the Delver. Yes, uh, sometimes even relevant if you have two of them. Uh, you get to flip one at least if you... Yeah, we used to see that back in Innistrad Standard with the uh, with Thought Scow. Fork Bolt. So now a combination of Fork Bolt and uh, Lightning Bolt would do the job. Insect and elaboration, equalizing the life turtles at 12 apiece. You, you mentioned Dismember as an out to Gurmak Angler, but the unfortunate reality is that the more often you get hit by it, the less likely you are to survive your own dismember. Yeah, that's so right. That's a great point. This is the turn to draw it. Otherwise, uh, it's just going to be a dead card. So, Hain with a Misty Rainforest. And it's going to be Young Pyromancer for him here. Yeah, that's why... Gazola's sitting on two days. Is that even three dazes? No, two dazes for two both dazes. and a land. But Whew. the... Uh, Alexander Hain just hasn't given him a chance to no. really, really use them. Um, th the play you mentioned, uh, double dazing the, the angler, yeah. wouldn't have turned out much better. No. Uh, but at least you would have used your cards, maybe feeling uh, feeling better ob th about the situation. I think because uh, Hain has a daze had a daze of his own and still has it. Oh, True Name Nemesis. Ponder, True Name Nemesis, and Wasteland are the, uh, are the cards here for Gazola. But... Um, this is where, once again, if, if you are in the driver's seat, your situational counter magic is going to be better. Yeah. Because the opponent on the under pressure cannot uh, doesn't have the liberty no, to keep open they, the map. No, they have to extend into something, that a little trap that you prepared for them. And Gazola here can't just slam this uh, True Name Nemesis uh, off three mana because it'll eat immediately eat a daze. And this is why the having a good game plan, a good strategy, especially in the mirror match, yeah. where, where mana can be so uh, so constrained, is, is absolutely key. And you would see the situations where double days, I mean, being able to daze for days is actually very important in many situations, but uh, Hain just hasn't, hasn't exposed a, a single opportunity where he's going to get wrecked. Yeah, and if, if the roles were reversed or if the game goes differently or it starts differently, then suddenly the daze is, is uh, one of the best cards you can have. Forked Bolt the play here for Gazola, not wanting Hain to get too much value off of the young Pyromancer. Hain has the option of, uh, of a hard cast days here, should he choose to do it. We might see that happen. That'd be very interesting if so. Finds a Volcanic. And what's the play here for Hain? Does he only have one card in hand? Is it one card? Well, they're very neatly stacked if not. You you could daze here if you Two if cards. you think that um, that it's not going to do anything ever again. But uh, brainstorm is is uh, much yeah brainstorm's much a real a real nice one. Getting value from the young pyromancer in response to this uh, forked bolt here, and being able to go wide is going to be a nice way as well to uh, in case that uh, young pyromancer oh sorry that. Uh, True name nemesis comes down. It's going to be nice to be able to go as wide as possible. Then, a very nice, um, a very nice uh, interaction in Legacy is when your opponent brainstorms with a fetch land up, with exactly a fetch land up. You can daze the brainstorm, which means it will still resolve, but you uh, deny your opponent the the option to to shuffle uh, their deck afterwards. So we see Alexander Hain cast his days against Gianluca's. Days, it's days is for days. He he. Um, in th in this case, he knew that the stack would how the stack would turn up, turn out, and just wanted to make sure that he got another token out of the deal. And we're going to see this uh, original days pa uh, paid for. Will Gazzola go for days number three? Wednesdays. I mean, good old think about it here. You can see the bloke there, eyes agape, volleyballs flying all around him. I 
And Gazzola really having to consider his option here. Ponder, the trop that he returned to his hand, and the days in the hand of Gazzola. And here is days double, d days number two, or days number three, all up. But the set, the double days, is going to kill the pyromancer. Going to uh, mean the brainstorm doesn't resolve, but it leaves Hain now with two one ones. Exactly, and that's uh, that's lethal. And uh, Gazzola also wants to crack that fetch land if possible. Yeah. So now um, he might be in a position where he blocks an elemental token, goes down to one. So the wooded footers in in play is actually worthless. So what's Gazzola's play here? I, I don't think chunk blocking is an option. Uh, well, it looks like that's the way that he's going to go there, Zim, on your disagreement. It, it is an option. Uh, I take that back. But <laughs> it's uh, I, um, I think your chances of winning are um, are not higher now that you've done that. Maybe maybe knowing that you're drawing uh, Trinity Nemesis actually made it necessary to play that way. I just, uh, I'm just afraid that with... Uh, the true name nemesis only being a pacifism, a virtual pacifism yeah. for Gurmak Angler, yeah. you are you are still losing the race to the to the elemental tokens. Of course, yeah, two turn clock with those elemental tokens. I mean the, the three one is a nice little roadblock there, but Haynes in no worry with his life total. He's on nine. Doesn't uh Gianluca doesn't have time to peel the cards he needs here before those elemental tokens are gonna uh, end things very quickly. So with three mana available, we are gonna see here it is, True Name Nemesis. Hain also has a card, uh, is also going to draw a few more to, to close things out. And he knows that the, the Nemesis is um, has to block and has to stay back. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to see any attacking from the uh, little 3-1 there. As uh, the two ig ignoring, one get ignoring double bolt scenarios. Oh, single bolt is enough. There we go. Alexander Hain gets himself into the semifinals. Congratulations to the Canadian Pro Tour champions. Commiserations to Gazzola. I tell you what, what a weekend he's had, though. Of course, going home with a fat stack of cash, a, qu a Pro Tour qualification, and a sack full of Pro Points as well. So he can't be un un unhappy with how he's gone so far. Yes, that's not the first thought that comes into your mind when you lose in the, in the GP Top 8, but no. uh, definitely a great achievement. Yeah, well done indeed to Gazzola. But hearty congratulations go out to Alexander Hayne after finding his way into the semi-finals I mean he's no stranger to success he's won GPs up and down the globe and he's gonna he's he's gonna uh, make a hard run at it here Zimon Gertsen our quarterfinals are done and dusted it's been a great pleasure to have you but more magic coming your way Tim and Matei coming up with the, the uh, semis before much longer stick around we'll be back with GP Prague very very soon <laughs>